Hi, my name is Heidi Rethmeyer. I am a staff developer at ESU8, and this webinar is to learn more about the Elementary Science Olympiad that we will be hosting at ESU8, or if you just like to learn more about the Science Olympiads um, for the state of Nebraska or a National Science Olympiad. So we're going to take some time to learn about what you could expect at the ESU8 sponsored Elementary Science Olympiad, or if you would just like some more information about creating a team. So let's go ahead and get started. So a Science Olympiad, what are the goals of a Science Olympiad just in general? Well, first of all, it is to create a passion for learning science. We want to bring science to life, uh, show how it works, and emphasize problem-solving aspects in science. Um, there's going to be a lot of inquiry going on at our particular ESU8-sponsored Science Olympiad for the students to participate in. We also want to develop teamwork and work on some of those cooperative learning strategies that these students will need in the real world. They will spend a lot of time brainstorming with each other and hopefully rely on each other's strengths as they work through some of the activities. We want to certainly celebrate outstanding achievement. Most science Olympiads are competitive in nature, so there's a lot of encouragement to really go above and beyond and strive to do your best in all the activities in terms of a competition. For the one at ESU8, it will be non-competitive, um, but for the most part, science Olympiads are competitive to encourage uh, a higher level of achievement. And we certainly want to encourage careers in science-related fields. We're hoping that an exposure to a science Olympiad will encourage students to enroll in more science courses and engage in other science activities like science fairs. So the ESU8 Elementary Science Olympiad, I just want to give you some details about uh, what's going to happen here at ESU8. Ours is going to be for fourth through sixth grade students. Each school is going to be allowed to bring four students. If I don't get the maximum number of students, I will certainly open that up to schools that have already registered if they would like to bring more. It will, be, it will take place at the Legion in Neely. And it will occur on Friday, November 21st. The check-in time will be at 9 o'clock, and we will allow some time uh, between the check-in at 9 and when the first activity takes place. Then there will be a final team building activity at 2 o'clock, so hopefully we'll have you out of there by 3 o'clock to hopefully get back in time for uh, the end of the day and buses for your students. And we're asking you to bring a sack lunch. We will not be providing lunch that day. So what can you expect uh, when you show up? Your students should be placed in teams of two, and that is something you as the teacher or sponsor uh, should do ahead of time. And it does not matter in terms of grades. You could have a mixed team with a fourth and a sixth grader, um, or you could have a fourth grade team or a sixth grade team. It doesn't matter as long as they are in teams of two. The students then with their team will rotate to seven different stations um, that have mostly inquiry-based activities for the students to participate in. And like I said, this one will be non-competitive. Most Science Olympiads are competitive, but for our first one we wanted to keep it pretty simple and really wanted it to be more about the science than the competition for our first one and hopefully um, increase the level of interest in Science Olympiads then maybe once these students have had some experience, perhaps then they would like to take part in more Science Olympiad teams either at the middle school or the high school level. Then there will be a final team building activity where the whole team from the school, including the sponsor, uh, can take part in a little activity. And probably the most often asked question that I receive is, is there any preparation required? So if you are familiar with Science Olympiads, a lot of the projects have some outside time that's required by students and teachers to build something and then they bring it and it's tested. Uh, for this particular um, Science Olympiad, there is no preparation required. We have chosen activities that do not require anything ahead of time. They just come to that particular station, they'll learn about what they have to do, all the resources will be there for them, and then they will have to uh, work on a particular activity. And like I said, most of them are inquiry-based. So there's nothing that needs to be done ahead of time. 
And also, most importantly, is that it's free. We don't want costs to deter any student or school from participating. So we would really just um, want to increase the interest in science and science Olympiads and the excitement for science among our students. You can register for the Science Olympiad at this link. I apologize for the link. Um, if you don't uh, get it written down here on this particular site, uh, please email me and I would be happy to send you that link. It's just a Google form where you would fill out your teams, your school name, um, and any other information that I might need to help prepare for the particular day. And as I said, I do have a limit on the number of students I can take, so please get that in as soon as you can. If I find by November 14th that I have not reached my maximum, then I will email the schools who have signed up so that they can bring additional te teams uh, since they are already coming if they choose to do that. All right, so now just some more information about Science Olympiads in general. Uh, the Olympiad um, are broken up into divisions. So A would be considered elementary, K through six. B would be grades six through nine and C would be grades 9 through 12. And as you can see there, there's some overlap. And this has to do primarily with the fact that across the nation, um, middle schools can vary in terms of grades. It may be a 6-7, a 6-8, a 7-9, a 7-8. Um, so they do allow some overlap in some of the grades. There are specific rules, however, in terms of your teams. For example, the middle school, the B division, you could not have all ninth graders or similarly for the high school division C, you could not have all seniors. So there are some specific rules on how many at each grade that you can have. But if you're interested in learning more about that, I'll show you a link here in, in just a moment. So if you want to start a team, um, you could go to the Science Olympiad website or you could go to the NDE website. And I will show you both of those now so you can get an idea as to where to find that information. So the Science Olympiad website, if you just Google Science Olympiad, it should be your first link and this is what should pop up. You could come here to start a team and some information would be given to you about starting a team. And notice you can select the individual state. You can select Nebraska and it will give you some more information. And it will actually take you to the same link that you can find on NDE website. So if you go to the NDE website, and go to Science Education. You'll notice right here under Websites of Interest, there's the Nebraska Science Olympiad. So here you can find a great deal more of information. And as you'll notice here, I believe to start a team, it costs $60, and that gets you registered with Science Olympiad, as well as um, the documentation and the rule books um, for coaches as well as the activities that would um, take part during either the regional or the state competitions. And that's where we got some of our activities off of our, is that booklet for elementary. So those are just some resources for you that you can uh, go to to find out some more information. Okay. Some regional competitions, and this will only be for divisions B and C for your middle school and your high school. So if you do have a team and you would like to compete, um, certainly you would uh, want to know ahead of time if there's any preparation required, and for the most part, I'm pretty sure there would be. Um, Henry Dorley Zoo will be offering one on February 28th. ESU 10 at the University of Nebraska Kearney will offer one on March 24th. And if you wanted to go out west, you could go to ESU 16, and that date has yet to be determined. So those are some regional competitions um, that you could go to if you were interested in competing and perhaps making it um, to uh, the national also. So. so the National Science Olympiad, this is something um, that's pretty exciting for the state of Nebraska. We are hosting the National Science Olympiad this year, so it's a pretty big deal. It is May 14th and 15th. It will be for divisions B and C, which again are middle school and high school. 
The city campus at University of Nebraska-Lincoln will be hosting it. This is going to be a huge undertaking and event. So they are looking for volunteers. So even if you don't have a team, um, but we'd like to learn more about uh, the Science Olympiad, this would be a great opportunity for um, either a sponsor, a teacher, and students to participate in volunteering um, to help out with the Science Olympiad. So if you would like more information, John Peterson would be a person to contact. His email is jep at unl.edu. And the scienceolympiad2015.com is the website. And you can also find this website on the NDE link that I just showed you. Now I'd like to show you a video that will give you an idea as to what the National Science Olympiad will look like. And you'll be able to see that there is a great deal of time and effort put into projects by these students before they come to the Science uh, Olympiad. I actually want to design roller coasters. I'm thinking thrill rides. I see myself as an aerospace engineer. If I really want to be an engineer that helps conserve energy. science because it defines how the world works. It really opens the future up for a world of possibilities. When you understand why different things happen, it can give you an idea of how to innovate better things. It gives the students the opportunities to open their minds and think about how everything works in our daily lives. Go! It's just so fun learning. I love math. I just like working with my hands. It provides an opportunity for us to open our minds to new ideas and experiment. Learn new things and discover the undiscovered. Of uh, science. Yeah. mind in a way that you haven't used it before. I am pretty intimidated. <laughs> They're so good out there. Mind-boggling, always surrounded by you know tons of geniuses, it seems like. There's going to be some competition. Look, I mean, some of those bottle rockets are just amazing. I've never seen one that good. To be here in the magnitude with all of these amazing people is shocking. It's intense. Nerve-wracking, nervous. Rubber band plus plastic plus wood equals 60 feet of helicopter flight. <laughs> That's just astonishing. It's been a great experience. From the opening ceremony to the actual competition. It's like, wow, you're here, nationals, top 60 in the nation. It feels amazing. It's like a once in a lifetime thing. The whole stimulating environment is really great because you get friendly peer competition going on. Uh, which is, I think, a really great environment for us. It's definitely given me a chance to grow. I've met people I never would have met before in my life if I hadn't done this. All of the amazing talent that's here really affects you when you go home. I, myself, want to be a pediatrician. Thinking about being an engineer. I want to be some sort of an architect. Making stuff fly, going to space. I would like to become a coach for Science Olympiad in the future. Very interested in physics. It's going to be my life. I, I don't know. That's, that's the future. I haven't gone there yet. With epic failure comes epic success. Experiments will always end up failing. You just have to keep going as hard as you can. You should explore our intelligence too. You know, see how far our minds can go and how our mind capacity can grow. All right, so that was from the 2011 national competition that took place at uh, Wisconsin. So that just shows you uh, some of the time and effort I think that you can really see the students and their sponsors put into a Science Olympiad. A lot of robotics, a lot of design, so a great opportunity for students um, to um, really share some of their, their great ideas. Now again, if you'd like to take part in the ESU-8 Elementary Science Olympiad, here's the form that you can register at, or feel free to email me, and I would be happy to send you that link. 
or if you have any questions concerning what I talked about in the webinar, please email or call. Thanks for watching.